All right, this was an absolutely amazing trip that we took to Belgium uh, with my friend uh, Peter. This is DJ uh, here that you're looking at. He is the breeder of uh, Better Boxwood. Uh, we toured his nursery, her plant, uh, in Belgium. That's my friend uh, Peter, just to my right there, and then DJ's son is kind of in between us over there. Uh, DJ started this nursery with two brothers, and uh, some of their kids now uh, work at the nursery as well. This Better Boxwood project, um, I, I came into this meeting, didn't know what to think. You know, we we're going to be talking about boxwoods, um, and uh, you know, came into this meeting and was absolutely blown away. I've been talking about it with everybody ever since. I'm probably annoying people about my trip uh, to this boxwood nursery because they started this project looking for blight resistant boxwoods back in 2007. And D DJ's coming up in the video here. He's gonna tell you more about, more about this. They started this project back in 2007 to find these blight resistant boxwoods and they went the world over um, looking at the species all around the planet and then did DNA analysis on them, uh, made sure that they kind of understood uh, the various boxwoods from various boxwood species from around the planet. They're, you know, kind of all over the world. Uh, and then got to work in making these four so far varieties of better boxwood. Skylight is probably the most versatile, the one that you can kind of cone shape or ball shape or whatever, but then there's three other varieties as well. We have an upcoming video from the King and Queen's Palace in uh, the Netherlands, and you will see them used in that formal garden. So what's happened here is these, he is the only licensed grower in Europe. He hasn't li licensed anyone else to grow them in Europe. So his nursery here grow, does all the growing for uh, Europe. And we'll see the outdoor part of this in just a minute after DJ uh, brings us up to date. But he, he's, you know, he's supplying these to the, in all of Europe and the formal gardens like Versailles, believe it or not. Um, and of course the King and Queen's garden, that you, again, you'll see in this future video, he's got lots of boxwood species in here that they're uh, looking at. Um, but we'll see, you know, in upcoming videos, but you know, for Versailles, you know, it takes tens of thousands of boxwoods to replace the formal gardens. And that's, you know, that's what they, that's the project they've been undertaking. Here in the United States, we have lots of licensed growers across the country. So we're seeing availability on these better boxwoods come up and up and up. Uh, here he is showing off a display that they're using in Europe in the garden centers um, to show off the different growth habits of the four the four different varieties. Babylon Beauty is the one that's been mostly used in the uh, formal gardens uh, to replace um, the, the blight, you know, the ones that have succumbed uh, to blight. He had lots of formal plantings on his nursery property, as you would expect. Uh, lots and lots of uh, opportunity for us to take uh, photos of, uh, of boxwoods. Uh, they are flowering plants. Here are the flowers on them. We don't think about them as flowering plants, but you will not believe the pollinator activity that's around these boxwoods when they're actually in full bloom. Uh, here is a forest of boxwoods. Um, this is kind of how boxwoods grow in the wild. They, you know, ultimately stretch like any other woody shrub and uh, form a forest like that. But you can see these larger uh, material here, probably going to like landscape jobs around Europe. Um, and then here's an example kind of of what we've seen in formal gardens across e everywhere now as we see interplantings within the formal garden with native pollinator plants and you know more natural looking spaces within the formal blocks but uh, here's dj to tell you uh, more about this uh, project that he's undertaken my name is uh, didier hermans i'm a belgian grower boxwood grower and we are uh, we have uh, developed the resistant uh, better boxwood uh, for the American market. Uh, we are a fam family business with three brothers, started 40 years ago, and now our children are working uh, in our company. Um, we start our breeding program in 2007, together with the Institute of Agriculture in Belgium, based on our very large collection of wild species and varieties of boxwood. Um, the first thing we did is to see how the genetic tree of Buxus is built out and we have done DNA investigation to see how this genetic tree uh, can help us in our future breeding. Then we start to make crosses, we need flowers then, make crosses between different species 
and every year we make about 5,000 new, uh, new seedlings. And uh, after a few years we had enough seedlings to test and to inoculate, to spread with the disease on a controlled way, on a scientific way, together with the Institute of Agriculture, to see how resistant they are, because there are different levels of resistance. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a four years project about it and see how, how, yeah, how strong this inoculation must be. Then was the first test we, we did. Later on we used test fields with the same inoculated plants to see uh, yeah, how strong the plants are in outside conditions, in your garden conditions. Um, the end of 2015 we chose four different varieties in the Bitter Brookswood uh, range. Um, for low hedges we have Renaissance, you see here these low, low hedges. Um, perfect for uh, historical gardens and, and, and small hedges in our garden. The other one was Babylon Beauty, it's more a ground covering or for a bowl shape. And Heritage also for normal hedges and, and uh, bowl shapes. And then the fast growth was Skylight, Bitter Boxwood Skylight, for this large... In Europe we use a lot of uh, uh, cloud shapes, plants that grow quite fast and you make a cloud shape or for a bowl shape on, on, uh, on the short term. Um, we, in, in Europe, most of our plants go to historical gardens. Historical gardens like Palais at Law in the Netherlands, Herrenhausgarten in, uh, in Germany, or Chateau de Villandry in France, and of course uh, Versailles, where we renew the complete uh, Parterre du Midi with the Renaissance plants. Uh, plants in these gardens, they're growing for more than 400 years, uh, buxus or boxwood in these gardens. The reason for your garden is you can plant it everywhere, in every soil. You can keep it very long, even a lifelong. It's deer resistant. Better boxwood is completely resistant for box blight, that's good. And has a higher tolerance for the boxwood mud. This is a perfect plant for your garden. So you can see why I was kind of blown away by the amount of work that had actually gone into this project. It's just unbelievable. But look at all these perfect boxwoods uh, out in this field. Uh, once we uh, you left the greenhouse area where they do all the uh, rooted cuttings and all their uh, you know op indoor observations, they put them out here. Uh, look at the pr pruning machines to uh, get them into perfect little balls out here in the field. So they're all just basically uh, clones of one another. Uh, they had a couple other pieces of interesting uh, equipment as well. But we're t you know we're touring out here uh, in this. It was a beautiful day. It was actually a little bit, it was a little bit hot for uh, Belgium for sure. I think it was around 90 degrees, but it's perfectly sunny out here. And we're, you know, walking around these fields. And then I realize, you know, he starts to tell us there's actually blight. There's actually boxwoods with blight um, out here, you know, in, they, use, they, they, they put boxwoods that will get boxwood blight out here with them. Um, so they're constantly, um, under threat from boxwood blight. So they've continued, they didn't just test them and put them through the testing and make sure they wouldn't get blight. They continue to subject them to other plants, to be near other plants uh, that have boxwood blight, uh, which is just absolutely wild to me. Um, here's one of the pruning machines that makes the uh, cones um, or the uh, upright narrow um, features, the um, uh, fastigiate varieties. Uh, this is probably skylight, uh, but you can see, you know, how fast this is, you know, modified uh, pruning uh, saw on a uh, uh, on a machine there. But just giant fields of uh, boxwoods grown in various ways. Again, he's the only supplier, um, you know, of of sorts. It's called Better Buxus in Europe, and then it's called uh, Better Boxwood uh, in the U.S. But they just call it Buxus, which is the genus name. Here, okay, so here are groupings of new trialed plants that are coming in the future and in and amongst this is is plants that have actually been given boxwood blight uh, varieties that are susceptible you know susceptible to it uh, so that they're out here with the plant so every time it irrigates that's splashing these 
spores all over the place. And uh, here's the, name, the entryway to his nursery. Uh, but they're splashing these spores all around out there just to con continue to confirm and confirm uh, that they have done it, basically. Uh, you know, they've gotten past, um, you know, they've gotten past at least this, you know, this one, this one issue that's cropped up in such an important uh, horticulture crop. And again, you know, you see this type of formal garden here. This is not necessarily what we see as much anymore. You know, we've seen these kind of spaces, you know, now, and you, you know, you'll, you'll even see that at the King and Queen's formal garden. There's formal spaces like this, but then there's interplanted spaces um, within it as well. But I can't, I, could, I just can't believe this trip that we made um, to this uh, boxwood breeder. I did not, I had no idea when I got out of there how shocked I would be that the amount of time and effort that actually went into this process and how, you know, somebody, somebody had to jump all in and he was the person to, uh, uh, here, here's DJ here, he was the person to, uh, to knock this out of the park and uh, allow folks that have had boxwood blight in their areas um, grow them. So thank you guys. This is not my kind of normal everyday kind of video, but I thought it was super, super interesting to hear from DJ on this better boxwood. Thanks for watching.